Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pua, the chemistry guru. Now in organic chemistry, we have a few functional groups that we consider to be acidic or they can donate proton. So in this video, we want to spend a bit of time to compare the acidity of these organic compounds. Now in organic chemistry, when we want to compare acidity, the concept that we use is the stability of conjugate base. So if I look at this dissociation, which is a very simple dissociation involving a weak acid, HA, a weak acid, it is a proton donor, so in the forward direction, it can donate H+, plus and it forms conjugate base A-. minus. And because it is a weak system, I know that this is a reversible sign. Now, what we focus on, again, is the stability of conjugate base. So the concept goes something like this. If A-, minus, which is the conjugate base, is more stable, then the system will actually favor the formation of A-, minus, which is more stable, so therefore, the position of the equilibrium will lie towards the right hand side so the position of the equilibrium will shift towards the right hand side favor the formation of conjugate base because it is more stable now you notice when the position of the equilibrium shifts towards the right hand side what you will form is you will also form more h pluses so that is the reason why when the conjugate base is more stable the weak acid would be more acidic because it will favor the dissociation to form conjugate base and at the same time it releases more H pluses. So the concept is fairly simple. It is just summarized here. The more stable the conjugate base, the stronger the weak acid. Now next, let us list down some of the functional groups that we are interested in and we compare them in terms of acidity. Now the functional groups will be here in syllabus. Acid, it is the most acidic functional group. Our carboxylic acids will be the most acidic guy, followed by phenol, followed by water, followed by alcohol. Now, of course, technically speaking, water, it is not an organic compound, but it is good to put in water as a referencing so that in terms of the pH of the solution and the nature of the organic compound, we are aware of it because we know that water, it is neutral, correct? So if phenol is more acidic than water, then we will expect phenol to dissociate in solution to give me H plus when I dissolve phenol in water. But on the other hand, if I look at alcohol, if alcohol is less acidic than water, then when we dissolve alcohol in water, alcohol is not able to dissociate its H pluses because it is a weaker acid than water. So therefore, when I dissolve alcohol in water, the solution is neutral. Alcohols are neutral. So as mentioned, what we want to do is, in order for us to explain the acidity, we have to look at the conjugate bases for each of these so-called weak acids, and I consider the stability of their conjugate bases. All right, so let's look at carboxylic acids first. Now, carboxylic acid, in terms of dissociation, it is fairly straightforward. Carboxylic acid dissociate to give me R, COO minus, the conjugate base, plus H plus. So what we want to do in order for us to explain the stability of conjugate base, R, COO minus, we have to look at the structure in detail. So the structure for R, COO minus is here. Now actually, what we notice is when you have a negative charge on oxygen, what I want to show is I want to show that this negative charge on oxygen can actually move away from this oxygen. And if I can show that this negative charge is actually dispersed from this O minus, it can actually stabilize the conjugate base. The idea involving stability is actually fairly simple. If I have a negative charge on this oxygen, and if I can show that the negative charge can move away from this oxygen, it will actually help to make this negative charge on oxygen less negative or make it more neutral. So therefore, it will stabilize the conjugate base. Now, in terms of carboxylate, what happens is the negative charge on this oxygen can actually be delocalized away from this oxygen into the C double bond O group by the interaction of pi electrons. So what I can do is I can show the arrow pushing to illustrate how this negative charge moves away from oxygen. So I can draw a lone pair on this O minus, draw an arrow from lone pair to here. So effectively what I'm doing is I'm forming a double bond between oxygen and carbon. Then what I do is I draw an arrow from the pi bond between carbon and oxygen, point to oxygen. So the electrons will be moving towards this oxygen on top. Now the consequence of that, let us try to draw out the product that is being formed. R and carbon effectively stays the same. 
Now as mentioned, this oxygen at the bottom is trying to form a pi bond with the carbon here. So later this will become a C double bond O. So it will become a carbon double bond oxygen. And the carbon double bond O on top actually is broken, right? So I'm pushing two electrons from the pi bond to oxygen on top. So this CO bond will become a single bond and the negative charge will be given to oxygen because electron is given to the oxygen on top. So I end up with something like this, CO, and the negative charge is now on oxygen at the top. Now what we notice is something interesting is I can effectively shift the negative charge from oxygen at the bottom to the oxygen on top by moving of pi electrons. Because if I were to label the oxygen, this is oxygen A and this is oxygen B. Now on the right hand side, this is still oxygen A and this is still oxygen B. So effectively what we are doing is all the atoms stay put, the oxygen also stay put. What is changing is the movement of the electron at the pi system and the negative charge is shifted from the oxygen at the bottom to the oxygen on top. We're not flipping the compound around, I'm just shifting the pi electrons and the negative charge actually can move from one part of the species to another part of the species. So we say that the negative charge is dispersed from this O minus, so therefore it stabilizes the conjugate base. Now if I look at the structure on the right hand side, the negative charge on oxygen doesn't stay on top, it can actually come back down. So we can draw the same arrow pushing to try to illustrate this. I can draw the lone pair on oxygen A, draw back this arrow, form back this double bond. Effectively what it will become is, it will go back to this guy C double bond O. Then after that, the carbon double bond at the bottom, I draw arrow from the pi bond point to oxygen B. Effectively, I'm shifting the negative charge back to oxygen at the bottom. So what I can show is I draw a double headed arrow to represent that the electrons can shift in this way and it can go back to the structure on the left hand side. So these two are resonant structures of each other, but actually what it represents is it is not saying that the negative charge is fixed at oxygen at the bottom. It is also not fixed at the oxygen on top. Actually, it can move and it can be delocalized. So the location of the negative charge is somewhere between oxygen A and oxygen B. So usually what we will do is we'll draw the delocalized version of the carboxylate, which will look something like this. I will draw the R group, I draw the carbon, and I draw both oxygens, and I draw the sigma bond. Now for the pi bond, what I'll do is I'll draw a curve to represent the delocalization. Using this curve, I'm trying to represent that the negative charge is delocalized between oxygen on top to this carbon to oxygen at the bottom. And we will also need to add this negative charge to show that it is the negative charge that is delocalized between oxygen, carbon, and oxygen. Now some schools actually, instead of using the solid line, they will use the dotted line to represent the delocalized structure of carboxylate. But the idea is effectively the same, whether you're using a solid line or you're using a dotted line to draw this, we are saying that the negative charge is delocalized very well between oxygen, carbon, and oxygen. Now, because this delocalization it is an extensive delocalization, it is a very good delocalization because on both ends of this delocalization are electronegative oxygen. So what they will try to do is they will try to pull the electron as close to itself as possible. Now, on one end of it, it is electronegative oxygen. On the other end of it, it is also electronegative oxygen. So in terms of the spreading of the negative charge, it will be a very good spread and the negative charge is spread out or delocalized very well between oxygen, carbon, and oxygen. So we say that this is a very good delocalization or extensive delocalization. That is the reason why carboxylate, in terms of conjugate base stability, it will be the most stable. So if the conjugate base is the most stable, so for carboxylic acid, the position of the equilibrium will lie towards the right hand side to a larger extent. So it can form more H plus. So carboxylic acid, it is the most acidic functional group in A level syllabus. Now next, let's look at phenol. Now phenol, in terms of dissociation, is something like this. Phenol will dissociate to give me phenoxide plus H plus. Again, we know that phenol is more acidic than water. So what we want to focus on is we want to explain how come the phenoxide is also stabilized and therefore it is more acidic than water. 
So phenoxide, the structure is something like this. If I were to draw it sideways, and I show the delocalized pi system in benzene. Now, for O-, O- actually it has a lone pair. So what O- can do is it can use the lone pair to interact with benzene. So usually when we draw it, I can represent it in this way. I can use the arrow, draw this arrow in to represent that the lone pair can actually interact with the delocalized pi system of benzene. So effectively what will happen is the electron clocks will overlap and the delocalized pi system will now be extended to the CO bond. So we know that benzene have six delocalized electrons swimming around benzene. And because of this delocalization, all the six carbon in benzene is stabilized by resonance. So if oxygen can interact with the delocalized pi system, then the delocalized pi system is now extended to the CO bond. So this CO bond will also be stabilized by resonance. But in terms of interpreting the stability of conjugate base, what we should be focusing on is we should look at the negative charge on oxygen moving away from oxygen into benzene. So since it is moving electrons away from oxygen, you make this O- less negatively charged or more neutral. So therefore it is stabilizing. But this stabilizing effect is because of resonance, because of the interaction between the lone pair on oxygen and the delocalized pi system of benzene. So phenoxide is stabilized by resonance. So if it is stabilized by resonance, then phenol will be more acidic than water. Now I think in terms of comparison, it is good to look at water. Of course, we know that water is neutral. So maybe what we do is we try to write out the conjugate base involving water. And we talk about the stabilizing effect of hydrogen on O-. So water dissociation, obviously, it will be water split to give me H+. Now OH minus, it is the conjugate base. Again, if I try to explain the stability of conjugate base, so what's so interesting about OH minus or hydrogen bonded to O minus. Now what is the effect of this hydrogen on the stability on O minus? Now hydrogen, it is not a donating group. It is also not a withdrawing group. So because hydrogen is neither electron donating nor withdrawing, so it doesn't push electron to oxygen. It also doesn't pull electrons away from oxygen. So it doesn't have any effect on oxygen and it doesn't affect the stability of this O- to any extent. That is why this is used as a benchmark. And usually when we answer questions, we won't explicitly talk about it. We will just say that if there's anything that can help to pull electrons away from oxygen, then it will be stabilizing, you'll stabilize the conjugate base, you'll make it more acidic than water. Just like what we have discussed for phenoxide, if you notice what we have previously mentioned involving phenol, the phenoxide, the O- can interact with benzene. So electrons is moving away from O- into benzene. So it will stabilize this O-. And when we say that the conjugate base is stabilized, then it means that phenol will be more acidic than water. Then conversely, if I have a group which is electron donating and you push electron to O-, you make this O- more negatively charged or what we say, it intensifies the negative charge on oxygen. So you destabilize the conjugate base and in turn, you make that acid less acidic than water, which is the case of alcohols. So the last functional group that we want to discuss is alcohols. And I know that alcohols are less acidic than water. And why is it the case? Again, if I focus on the conjugate base, now this conjugate base, ROH, will dissociate to give me RO- and H+, this alkoxide. Now for this alkoxide, if I look at the effect of R group on the stability of O-, R group, it is an electron donating group. So electron donating group, you donate electrons, you push electrons to oxygen. So you notice what happens is you make this negative charge on oxygen even more negative or it intensifies the negative charge on oxygen. Now this is destabilizing because now the charge is more intense and this oxygen becomes more negatively charged so it becomes less stable. Now if the conjugate base is less stable, so it will mean that the position of the equilibrium lies towards the left hand side. So it means that alcohol is less likely to dissociate to form H+, it is less acidic than water. Alright, so that was the discussion involving comparing acidity of organic compounds. 
Remember, the concept involving acidity is very straightforward. We just focus on the stability of conjugate base. The more stable the conjugate base, the more acidic that weak acid. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.